how's everybody doing today and as you can see we're going to be rebuilding the colorado rockies a team that in real life is underperforming i definitely think they should be doing a lot better so if you guys want to see some more rebuilds make sure you hit the like button down below if we hit 300 re or 300 likes i'll do a rebuild tomorrow how about that so if you guys want to see some more rebuilds hit that like button down below subscribe if you were new and enjoyed the content and as always in the comment section let me know what you guys thought about today's rebuild and also let me know which team to do next so let's hop into this rebuild obviously we're doing that five year style still and as we move into it let's talk about this team because there are definitely some players i don't want to keep let, let, let's just put it that way so when we look at the team i think the bull the starting rotation is pretty strong kyle freeland john gray and Armand marquez three great starters they all develop very well they're three players i want to keep on to when i look at these two i think for what i think their contracts run for a year or two they're not bad so i think keeping them around for the time being until we really need that fourth and fifth starter will be fine we also have senzatella hoffman castellani pint um we also got a couple other guys rollison so there's some names down there that could potentially feature but for right now i think our starting five is fine um relief pitchers kind of old you know we got O, dunn shaw russin not players i want to keep around um some of these guys have big contracts as well we'll look at that in a second we do have estevez who did you know he develops quite nice like around the 80s low 80s mid 80s but outside of that no one i'm really sold on wade davis for a couple seasons he's good as a closer catchers really not anybody i'm looking forward to keeping i want to find a new catcher maybe not first season or second season but definitely we're gonna need someone um you know at some point in the rebuild first base both aging daniel murphy's got a two-year deal i don't know if i can hold on to him that long he's a player that's going to decrease in rating very very quickly um so we may have to find a new home for him garrett hampson i want to see how he develops at second base we also have mcmahon so we have two good second basemen for prospects i think one of them is going to be traded i probably will keep hampson um so we'll see how that goes arenado don't even need to question it he's our third baseman we have colton welker as well who could feature I, he looks like a great prospect he probably will feature at some point shortstop trevor story we're set when it comes to prospects we have rogers welker mcmahon hampson we got a lot of you know players at these positions that are kind of full shortstop and third we don't need to fill those spots story and arenado are not going anywhere so really all these prospects are fighting for that second base spot um left field david dahl he develops quite nicely he's our left field center field tapia i don't know we'll, we probably will find a new center fielder soon enough but for now it may be tapia right field charlie blackman he's locked up for a good amount of years i can't keep him that long maybe a season or two at best and then we, we're gonna have to find someone new so we've covered that part of the rebuild let's let's get into some trades i'll catch you guys in a sec oh budget we gotta talk about budget so when you look at contracts blackman's contract is a big worry i think for two seasons he's okay outside of that we're gonna need to find someone new um desmond i need to get rid of uh murphy probably gonna try to get rid of shaw 100 gonna get rid of mcgee same thing we need to get him out the door um but outside of that you guys can see the rest most of them are pretty small contracts so let's get into some trades now all right first base is now taken care of for the future joey gallo is coming to course think about that home runs galore mark reynolds and ryan mcmahon are being traded to make this happen who i'm excited hoffman jake mcgee and walters the big piece in this trade is obviously jeff hoffman a potential he normally doesn't reach higher than like 75 so i'm not really bothered by trading and we're going to the cubs for a new center fielder albert almora jr really good contact stats usually hits around you know 280 plus every single season um high amount of hits this guy's definitely good to pick up for the center field spot all right we're trying to strengthen up this bullpen get it a little bit younger cody allen and cam bidrosian are coming in for willie mcleaver um pat Baleka, who doesn't really ever develop um so i'm not too fussed about losing him and then ian desmond good bullpen arms coming in i like it all right to help with the catcher spot since we did trade away 
what was his name? Walters, Tony Walters. We're going to bring in Joe's Mill Pinto to kind of help with that backup catcher spot. Um, if anything, he could probably start over Ionetta. Um, since I, I'm, from what I remember, I know Pinto develops quite nicely. So we'll probably just have him start over um, Ionetta. So I'm going to show you guys the lineup right now. Let's get that sorted out. So you guys can see this is the lineup once we get Pinto in. Um, it's going to look like this, you know. It's it's a scary lineup. Jeez, it is it's really scary. Um, I mean, Gallo, Arenado, Story. You got Dahl, Blackman. It's a good looking lineup. Um, we'll look at the bullpen right now. This is how we're looking: Freeland, Gray, Marquez, Anderson, Bettis. Shaw is a player I kind of want to get rid of based on his contract. So we might have to do that at the deadline or even right now. Um, but yeah, this is, it's not bad. It's, it's not the worst. Obviously there are some players I'd like to get rid of, but for right now, it's really not that bad. Um, I'm going to look for a trade for Shaw. I'll be right back in a sec. Alrighty, Tyler Nevin, um, Grant Levine. I don't think those two are going to feature. And then Brian Shaw for Manny Buenuelos of the white Sox, we kind of needed a long reliever and uh this is what uh, that's what we got you know his stats don't look too bad he's 28 years old he's kind of at that prime where he's going to start to develop very quickly contracts very low i like this trade it's not it's nothing too crazy helps out a little bit with the salary as well so this is the team going into the first season i'll see you guys at the uh draft day season one the the draft went pretty well 66 overall right fielder for us um, decent fielding uh, for a 20 year old good contact stats 85 potential so I'll sign him up for sure next highlight Casey Moore 54 overall 80 potential definitely not bad there 84 potential for this closer who is a 74 overall already great little like I think it was a third round pick for us uh, maybe a competitive balance pick another decent closing pitcher 67 overall with an 89 potential um, so it's looking like our bullpen is going to look kind of strong towards uh, the end of the rebuild. And then uh, a couple 79s with Benito Gutierrez and Juan Young Park. Park is 59 rated and Gutierrez is 65. So we'll sign them up just in case, you know, they end up being 80 potential players, which would still be pretty solid. So that's the draft for season one. Not too bad. Let's see how the rest of season one plays out. Season one finishes and we are a wild card team taking on the Phillies. 94 and 68 is our record. Obviously, the Dodgers are going to be a very tough team to take down. 13 games out in the division. The rest of the teams were 40 plus. Whew. Looking at the league leaders, Arenado had the best war. Freeland had the best ERA, 2.05, and the best winning percentage as well. Surprised to see he didn't win Cy Young. DeGrom did 18 and 8 with a 257 ERA. Well, let's go take a look at Freeland's 19 and 5, 1.13 whip, 205 ERA. How did he not win Cy Young? And we also made the playoffs. So what? How does that how does that happen? But so far, he looking like our ace looks good. We got John Gray. Marquez went up like eight ratings. He's looking like a solid pitcher as well. So first three were set. Tyler Anderson. Not a bad year. Definitely not a bad year. You know, not too bad. Chad Bettis, not even bad for a four or five pitcher either. Manuelos, yikes, bud. Yikes. Uh -huh. Oberg, not bad. Definitely not bad at all. I'm really good, actually. 70 innings pitched, sub three ERA. Unreal. Sungwon O is definitely going down in rating. I'm not going to bring him back. He's only going to get worse. Bidrosian, a little rough. Um, Pretty rough. The more I look at it, almost a two whip, almost the seven ERA. I'm hoping he gets better as time goes by. Mike Dunn, phenomenal 2.24 ERA over 70 innings. Cody Allen in the setup role, a sub two ERA. He's looking like our setup man for the future um, if we can get him for a cheap deal. And Wade Davis in the, uh, the closing role, it seems like things were going well for him. Three ERA, 39 saves, four blown saves not bad definitely not bad let's take a look at the lineup hampson solid year up to an 82 already solid you know how many hits did he have this year 170 not bad uh 278 average there we go almora 262 would like to see that average a little bit higher um i definitely think it will be 
as time goes by. Blackman hit 300 this year, 29 home runs, 84 RBIs, pretty similar to previous seasons. Awesome. Um, Arenado hit above 300, even better. 40 home runs, 106 RBIs. Gross numbers. Joey Gallo's hitting 220. That's kind of what he does, but 30 home runs, 75 RBIs. Solid. I mean, that's what we're looking for. Home runs and RBIs out of Gallo. 257 for Trevor Story, down from previous seasons, but he hit 45 home runs and 109 RBIs. So he's he's going to be our shortstop. He only gets better. There's no reason to start freaking out just yet. David Dahl's up to an 83. His potential's gone up as well. He hit 283. Um two oh my gosh i almost said two three home runs 23 home runs and 70 rbis great that's that's what i want to see out of this left fielder i want to see him get better and better daniel murphy 81 overall i mean for kind of our bench bat not not terrible numbers at all pinto didn't hit the ball very well um, but he's up to a 77 i don't understand that and then our bench bats didn't really do too well let's kind of check and see how our prospect pitchers did Sensatella is up to a 75 okay um these guys are mid 60s when we look at this we had russin in the minors estevez diaz okay we got a couple guys there um who else oh welker's up to a 72 all right rogers is 76 so those guys will definitely be you know what players i keep an eye out for in uh for the future and looking to be moved up to the pros but when we look at the wild card game against the phillies Let's see how this goes. We lost six to nine. A little unfortunate. Um, but let's hop into season two. You know, season one gave us a good a good idea. It looks like the moves we made were the right moves. Joey Gallo, obviously, you, you know you're expecting a sub 250 average with him, but lots of lots of run production. Almora, a little a little quiet. 260 is not where I expected him. I'm expecting more of the 280s, 300s. So hopefully that changes. But um so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. A lot of growth, and that's good. That's what you get with this Rockies team. You got some players who really grow. So let's get into season two, see how that goes. The Nationals, the Nationals. What? The Nationals defeated the Indians. Okay. Alrighty, for uh, exclusive negotiations, Cody Allen wants about $4 million a year. I will 100% give that. Um, the rest of the players, not really interested in. We're going to let them walk. Already for arbitration, we have Freeland, Story, Gallo, Bedrosian, Anderson, and Dahl. Oberg got it. Um, o and Dunn will not. Dunn is way too high for me to offer him um, six million. That's just that's just that's too much. And Almora got it. For contracts, looking at it, everybody here should should get one. I'm looking at it. Yeah, everybody's gonna get a contract. So there's that. I'll see you guys at the start of season two to show you who we signed. Alrighty, so we're going to start season two with a trade. Charlie Blackman, Casey Moore, and Yancy Almonte. Um, Yancy Almonte is right there. Casey Moore is kind of a low-rated pitcher. Um, and then Charlie Blackman I want to trade because of his contract. After this season, I don't think he's going to hold his rating too much more. Um, we're going to go for Tom Kohler, who's only here so that we can make the trade because of budgetary constrictions. And Gregory Polanco. I know in the Pirates rebuild, I traded him away, but I looked at every single season after I traded him away. He was a 300 hitter. You know, he was putting up good numbers, 20, 20 plus home runs. So I want to give him another shot, see how he does, especially since he had a pretty solid year last year. Alrighty, so we signed Devin Mezzarocco as our backup catcher for just the season. I looked at the other available options, there weren't too many that were too interesting. Another player we picked up is another closing pitcher. He's a young B potential player. Um, I looked at his stats. They were okay. If anything, we'll trade him in the future just because we have quite a bit of good um, pitching prospects for the closing position. And then the other move was um, Xavier Cedeno. We needed a, a lefty in the bullpen. Um, and this 33-year-old's got really good stats. Um, I used him on a rebuild on stream. And he pitched very well. So I want to see if he'll continue to do that. Um, plus, I said we needed a lefty. And then in the Rule 5 draft, I also added Tanner Scott for that long relief role. A young guy who's got a little bit of trade value. So if anything, we can end up trading him if he doesn't work out. Um, we have obviously traded for Polanco. And we will look at some of our uh, drafted prospects. We got Carlo Hernandez. The best one by far. 74 overall. B potential. Triple A right now. I definitely see him featuring in this rebuild. Gary Ibar is the next one, 67 with B potential. 
His per nines look really solid as well. Very consistent across the line. And um, that's that's really about it. We do have Lewis Dempsey as well. Um, but he's looking more like a long term. Maybe by season five we can get him involved. But Ibar and Hernandez are looking like pieces we could definitely see maybe by season three, season four. So there's that. I don't really see any more changes that I want to make to the lineup. The lineup looks good. It helps that we're losing Daniel Murphy after this year. Um, if need be, we could always go after a real catcher because uh, Pinto's contract runs out at the end of this year as well. When we look at the starting rotation, really my only question mark going into this year is Chad Bettis. We do have Senzatella in the minors. I want to give him one more year in the minors before we bring him up. And then I definitely think he'll be doing well. Um, but these top three are really good. Um, when you look at our bullpen, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, it held its own last year. Um, I have questions about these two. Um, they usually are either hit or miss. So hopefully they're not missed this year. We do have Cody Allen, who is phenomenal in that setup role. And then Wade Davis here. So really, season two, that trade was about it. A couple off-season acquisitions. And I think this team is a, another playoff team. So I'll see you guys at draft day. Already season two draft, it looks really nice. Uh, Pedro Gonzalez, 66 overall with a 94 potential. Amazing. That's awesome to see. Um, Rob Lang was a competitive balance pick seven or 85 potential. He's already a 73 overall. His per nines look really nice. Um, another competitive balance pick Vernon Gutierrez 69 overall already good vision. He's got 85 potential. Awesome pickup. And then Enrique Rodriguez. This was our second round pick. Um, so we already had four picks by the time we got to the second round. He's 71 overall. He was the best player on the board. 86 um, potential and then the rest aren't that great we're gonna let him go but season two's draft oh we got some nice looking players hopefully by season four season five they'll be ready to make a, a feature but there's the draft so far at the deadline we need a little bit more security in our bullpen so we're going for michael lorenzen of the reds um good per nines it's going up in rating ERA is doing really solid this season. Cedeno and Banuelos are not panning out. So we're just going to get rid of them. Add Lorenzen to the bullpen. Um, they, both, they both just had way too high of um, ERA. They both were like 6 plus. So they didn't really pan out. Everything else is looking okay. That's the only trade we're going to do at the deadline. I'll see you guys at the end of the season. So 88 and 75. It looks like we had to play a um tiebreaker game against let's see the mats and we won six to nothing so yeah we had to play, play a tiebreaker to make it to the postseason again we are a wild card team yeah yeah we did we did have to play a tiebreaker against the mets no league leaders or awards so let's quickly just take a look at the pitching rotation um compared to the previous seasons obviously freeland isn't as good but it's still solid numbers Sim his walks went down his runs did go up a little bit but yeah, um, similar pitching, like similar innings pitched, more strikeouts, um, and his ERA is still around a three. So I mean, that's 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 very good. Um, John Gray got better, which is awesome to see. Marquez ERA went up a little bit, but a 3.3 ERA is still very respectable. Senzatella, um, I brought him up midway through the season just because Bettis just wasn't cutting it. So we put him in the lineup, and you can see 3.36, very good for the ERA. 3.75 for Tyler Anderson as a five starter. Not bad. Definitely not bad. Lorenzo did well in the long relief role. Tanner Scott, four ERAs a little high. Um, wish it was a little bit lower, but I'll accept it. You know, I'll, I'm cool with it. 3.46 for Oberg. 70 innings pitched. Um, not as good as last year, but still not bad. Not bad. Estevez in his first year, a little high on the ERA. But um, he's only going to get better. And um, hopefully, hopefully that improves as well. Cody Allen didn't have a good year. He was kind of struggling, so I took him out of the setup role, and he really, he still continued to struggle. Musgrove struggled a little bit this year. Bedrosian looked like he's kind of move, starting to move into that setup spot. Very low ERA, held 19 games, pretty solid. And Wade Davis, this is his last season. He's going to start to decrease in rating anyways, so it's looking like we're in the market for a closer. When we move into the lineup, um, Garrett Hampson, I think his, yeah, his, his average went down a little bit. Hits were down a little bit as well. The power numbers, uh, I guess just one home run more because his RBIs went down a little bit. Strikeouts went down, walks went up, um, but otherwise his stats are pretty much the same. Almora is hitting around 300. That's what I'm looking for when I look um, 
when I acquired this player. He's up to an 81, so that's good to see. Polanco, 276, so it wasn't as good as the 302, but again, the home run numbers, the RBI numbers were there. He struck out a bit more, um, but you know what? His stats were pretty good in terms of home runs and RBIs. Arenado's hitting close to 300 with good home runs and RBI numbers. I mean, he's putting up Arenado numbers. Um, Joey Gallo, you know, not good in terms of average, but you know what? That you don't expect high average for Joey Gallo. Trevor Story, I need to move him up in the lineup a little bit. He probably should be our three hitter. Um, David Dahl is up to an 82, 280 is not bad for an average. I think that was the same as last year. Yeah, um, home run numbers took a little bit of a dip. Um, Daniel Murphy's done after this year, even though he actually had a pretty solid season. 290 average, 375 on base percentage. Not bad. Definitely not bad. Pinto just doesn't hit the ball. So I think we're in the market for a catcher as well. So a catcher and a closer, probably what we're looking for in the off season. Let's take a quick look at the team prospects wise. We do have a couple pitchers down here. No one coming in really soon. Prospects for the bullpen, kind of the same thing. It's really these guys. Hernandez and Ibar, we traded away one of those closers that we acquired in the offseason. But Hernandez, um, I think he needs at least one more year just because his per nines are still a little low um, for walks and home runs. But he's looking very good, very quick. His control is also kind of low at 45. Ibar is only a 71, but um, I still think he's going to be good. I, I really do. Um, looking at Welker, he's up to a 75. I think he needs a couple more seasons. His potential has gone down. Um, but I just don't think he's ready for the bigs yet. Brendan Rodgers is probably going to take over for Fuentes just because he's up to an 80. His stats look really good. And he's going to, I mean, maybe he can't. I just don't know where to put him. We Our infield is so stacked. I just don't know where to put these guys at all. We're, we're in a bit of a pickle. Um, David Dahl's there. Almora just acquired Polanco. And it says Hampson can play center field. So maybe, maybe trade one of these guys. If we need to open up a spot, I don't know. I really don't know. Lewis Dempsey's up to a 69. His stats don't look too bad either. So we may we may need to make a move um, to kind of uh, like allow all those young players to get into the team. But looking at the offseason, let's see how this game against the Padres goes. We lost three to six. So heading into season three, again, we need to make some moves. We've opened up a little bit of salary space with Daniel Murphy leaving, Wade Davis leaving, but we do have some openings now. Maybe a catcher, maybe uh, definitely a closer. Um, and then we probably need to really strengthen up that bullpen a little bit. So let's see what we can do. I'll catch you guys at the start of season two after I show you contracts. I always I always forget about talking about contracts. Red Sox defeat, defeat the Dodgers in the World Series. Um, so Jorge De La Rosa retired nothing too big there exclusive negotiations i'm not really interested in any of them first base coach i can i'll sign later so let's get into contracts really quick arbitration wise we will how did oberg do he didn't do terrible his potential's gone up his overall's gone up pinto pinto will sign as a backup and then We'll give everybody here one. We won't give Kohler one. And then looking at contracts, they're all young guys. So we'll definitely give them a contract as well. So I'll see you guys at the start of season three. Season three, the big prospect to look for is Carlo Hernandez. Again, I still don't think he's ready to come up to the majors just yet. So he's going to sit in AAA for now. Um, we did make a couple acquisitions. Um, Gary Ibar isn't one, but he's still sitting around a 71 overall. But um, we picked up Mike Zunino in free agency as a one-year deal. He kind of had a rough year last year, 171. The only reason he's starting or he's up to an 81 overall right now is because he's starting. Um, his stats look okay. We'll have to see how he does. Pedro Gonzalez was a player that um, we drafted. His stats look amazing. Um, let's see who else we got. Enrique Rodriguez is a 71. So he's looking really good. This is the big one. Rob Lang. What? 73 overall. He looks so good already. Control something I'm a little worried about, but I think he's definitely going to be really solid. We picked up Liam Hendricks for a two-year deal to kind of help out with our bullpen. Like I said, I had a lot of questions about it last season, and I wanted to lock it up a little bit. Um, this guy was a free agent. His fielding stats look decent. His speed's there. Hitting numbers aren't that great, but 
I decided to give him a three-year deal, see what happens. Um, he could turn out to be like a B potential player for the future. Um, we signed somebody else too that I saw. This guy, Kurt Worley, 74 overall, C potential. His hitting stats are okay. His fielding, not that great. Um, but again, he could turn to a B potential player, could be useful for the future. So that's about it in terms of moves for right now. We brought up Brendan Rodgers. And I'm just not too sure what to do because we did talk about possibly moving maybe Hampson out to center. Um, maybe getting rid of Almora. So we'll see how Almora performs this year. He normally does, you know, high contact numbers. He turns into an amazing player when he comes 27, 28, 29. But like I said, we do have some really good young players that we can rely on. Their contracts aren't going to be as big either. You just saw Garrett Hampson's uh, contracts you know, extended for the rest of the, the rebuild. Almora only has um, arbitration for one year. He He's coming to free agency this year, but he's not going to be that that expensive either. So it, it might be the smart move to move Hampson to center, trade Almora for something, maybe maybe a, another starter, because we do have Sensatella, but we could use maybe one for Anderson. Um, or... Who knows? We'll, we'll have to see how the season goes. I'm just rambling. I don't want to ramble too much more. So to start season three, that's how we're looking. Small acquisitions. I think the biggest question mark was the rota uh, the bullpen. And we definitely made it a little bit stronger. Um, I want to get Carlo Hernandez involved. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. If we do have some issues where we need to bring them up, we definitely will. So for now, this is how we're looking. I'll catch you guys at draft day yeah draft day this is the last draft for us already at the deadline day for season three we're gonna acquire max fried of the braves he's up to a 78 he's a long reliever what i'm thinking is i want to move lorenzo out of that long relief role um and then we can move him this guy into this long relief role we're gonna trade that newly acquired uh free agent that we have kyle or kurt worley and then Scott Oberg. Trading Scott Oberg allows us to move Lorenzen into the bullpen. You can see he's kind of having a, a tough year. Um, and he's he's decreasing a little bit. So that's a little bit unfortunate to see. Season 3 finishes as a postseason team. 93 and 69. And we're a, again, we're a wildcard team. We're taking on the Giants. Looks like we had a couple league leaders. Uh, just one. Hampson with the most triples. So looking at the standings. We finished second. 11 games behind the Dodgers. And then um, j just above the Giants, literally like a half game above the Giants, which is pretty crazy to think about. So when we look at the team, you guys can see Garrett Hampson fell off a little bit in terms of average. Um, he's continuing to go down, which is something that is a little worrying because I wanted to move him to center for Almora. But I, I don't know, you know, uh, I really don't know. So we'll have to see Trevor stories 266. So definitely. Um, it looks like he's kind of settling around that area. His home runs and his RBIs are very consistent. Hits wise, doubles, stuff like that. But uh, it's around a 270 average. Arenado had a down year, which is unfortunate. You know, I mean, 260 is a down year. He did produce a good amount of home runs, a good amount of RBIs. Um, hits went down a little bit. More doubles, more strikeouts as well. On base percentage is pretty similar with, along with slugging and OPS. So really just the average went down. Joey Gallo had an up year. All right, maybe he's finally starting to hit his stride um, and hit some bombs because we hit, what, 34? Okay, maybe maybe he's starting to go up, trend upward. Gregory Polanco, 252. Interesting. I mean, the home runs, the RBIs are still there. Good amount, like, similar walks. Strikeouts went down. Um, doubles. Hits went down a little bit too, but, you know, the on-base percentage slugging, OPS. I mean, it, it, I, I want to see what he wants. Um, I might bring him back for like two or three years. Or what we could do is move out more to right, Hampson to center, and then Brendan Rodgers can start at second. You know, that's that's something that we could do um, if Polanco wants too much money. Same thing with Dahl. Dahl really isn't improving as I would like him to. You know, home runs and RBIs, pretty similar. Hits went down, average went down, OPS went down, slugging went down. And obviously, for some reason, he expects to be a star, but he's not playing like one. So... You know, there's there's definitely some questions to be had. Brendan Rodgers had a good year. You know, obviously he wasn't an everyday starter, but 285, 10 home runs, 37 RBIs. He's making a statement, um, a claim for maybe a starting spot. And that's why I'm thinking maybe Hampson to center, Almora to right or left. Um, and then Brendan Rodgers fills in that uh, middle infield spot. Mike Zunino, 255. 
His potential has gone up to a B. He's up to a 70 or a 83. So he may be a player that, you know, maybe we bring back for another season or two. Pinto hit 214. Hunjun Park came in for a little bit. He did okay. Um, Tapia and Fuentes. All right. So let's take a quick look at the pitching rotation. Kyle Freeland settling around that low three ERA, which is phenomenal to see. That's what I want to see out of a, you know, the starter every single year. Um, that's good to see, especially the ace. John Gray, sub-3 ERA, phenomenal. Awesome. Marquez, hmm, a little bit of a down year. But you know what? I'm not going to freak out just yet. Um, he normally is a very consistent pitcher in franchise. Sensatella, 3-4 ERA. You know, it's looking like mid-3s is where he's going to be sitting, which is perfectly fine. Tyler Anderson hasn't even... Like, that's good. 3.1 ERA. Solid to see. Um, Fried, I want to see a little bit better. I, I know he's got A potential, so hopefully he'll continue to improve same with scott scott's really killing me he might be a player that gets traded lorenzen eh estevez not bad not bad at all hendrix he struggled a little bit this year we have him for one more year so we'll see how that goes bedrosian struggled a little bit too cody allen i mean bedrosian close to a four obviously unlike him but i i still feel comfortable with him being the setup man and cody allen we have one more year with cody allen the thing is, we have Carlo Hernandez, who I, I really want to get involved. I think he's ready. Let's take a look at his stats. Maybe. Maybe. We got Ibar, who went up a few ratings. We got Pedro Gonzalez, who's a starting pitcher, who's up to a 70 with eight potential. We got Lang, who's a 77. Like, we got, we got some good prospects to look out for. Welker still. Like, we're, we're going to have to figure something out because... We got a lot, a lot of openings that, uh, or we have a lot of players that are moving up that we don't have openings for. So we'll have to figure it out. But again, we're in the wild card. I feel like in season three we should finally play one. And I haven't been playing them just because it's the wild card. It's one game. But at this point, you know, we haven't made it past game like a wild card yet. We 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 should try it out. See how things go. Looking at the the um, Giants team. Peterson's new, Solaire's new, um, Paxton, Duffy's back. Um, okay, okay. So some interesting ones. I want to see that Avellino who got the double. Joey Gallo hits a solo shot, so he gives us a lead. Um, okay. Not bad, not bad. All right, who's this guy? He must be a rookie. I mean, 78? Okay. Um, bases loaded, no outs. Awesome. All right, so they do take the lead. Which is not good. You know, Kyle Freeland's supposed to be our ace. Can we do something here? All right, we get a run back. Hampson is on second. And that's a tie game. Okay, 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 okay. We're going to keep moving kind of quickly through this. That was that was his last inning, 100%. So, Joey Gallo ah, doesn't bring the run home. We're in pitching change. We got a string of lefties coming up. So, let's go to... Let's go to Scott. Perfect. All right, cool. He did his job. Did his job. All right. Couple righties. So I just, I want to keep it close. I got to keep it close here. Let's go to, let's go to Hendricks. All right, perfect. All right. Against Coda Glover. Zunino grounds out. We're going to pinch hit here. Going against the righty, we probably should go Park or Tapia. Let's go Tapia. He gets on. That's good. That's good. He's got the speed. First and second. A fly out. Come on, Gallo. Man, all right, we're going to bring in Bedrosian. Does his job. Arenado, walk it off. Come on. Against Melanson. Can we do something here? No, we can't. Bedrosian, can you go again? You do. One, two, three, and imperfect. Polanco. Zunino. Okay, pinch hit. Let's go. We're going against the righty, so... um, I don't think Park hits righties that well. He doesn't. Um, We'll go Rogers. He hits the ball very well. Let's go. Come on. Fly out. Amora. Damn. Um, I don't really want to put our star, our closer in. So let's go Lorenzen. Run scores, two runs score. Oh no, really? We're down to, ah oh, man, are you serious? Will Smith, the closer comes in, a double, okay. One runs in. Come on, Polanco, please. This, this is make or break for your Rockies career. Ah, uh, okay. 
<sighs> unfortunate let's go into the offseason season four let's get into it oh i didn't show you the draft picks not a single player was over 80 rated our highest player was 77 potential so that's why i didn't show you any of the draft picks so um yeah let's get into this offseason uh red Sox were defeated by the dodgers so basically a repeat of last year just flipped with the the winners and losers um so let's get into this. Let's get into this. Exclusive negotiations. Erosion. Hmm. Lorenzen. Let's let's see how much you want. Four a year. Let's do a two year deal. All right. We'll we'll try that. Zunino. If he wants around like four, I'll consider it. Six is quite a bit, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Lorenzen, like his stats show that he should be so much better. So we'll do, let's go like that. That's not bad. That's not bad. Tyler Anderson. Let's look at our roster. We have Lang. Lang could potentially be a starter for us. Maybe by season five. So let's, let's just go with a one-year deal for Tyler Anderson. And this is the big one. This is the big one I'm kind of worried about. Polanco. 14 a year. And I mean, he hasn't... He's only gotten worse since we've gotten him. So I'm going to let Polanco walk. He's a player I'm going to let walk. Um, so let's get into... Let's get into... Cody Allen has decided to decline his contract option. So that opens up um, Carlo's spot. Okay. And then Liam Hendricks is okay, so that's that's fine. So we have Hendricks coming back, and then Cody Allen. Do we bring back Cody Allen? We just brought back Bradrosian, so we'll let we'll let Cody Allen walk because um, we have we have Hernandez. So looking at arbitration, I think every, everybody's gonna get arbitration. Looking at contracts, we shouldn't have anybody to worry about too much that we we wouldn't bring back. So yeah, everybody's coming back. Season four is starting with us going for Caleb Ferguson for Tanner Scott, Carlos Estevez, and Ryan Rollison. Um, I don't think I made any big changes in the off season. Let me double check. Uh, oh, Alex Claudio. That is that is a name that I did bring in. Um, a lefty. He's been pretty solid for the last couple of seasons. Um, he we we needed lefty, and I felt like he was one of the better options available. Um, obviously, we just brought in another lefty as well. We'll take a look at the team. I've made a couple changes. Garrett Hampson is actually now our center fielder. So he could play center field. He's going to be moving to center. Amora is going to move to right since we let Polanco go. But this is how the team is going to line up um, unless we make a trade. But I don't I don't feel like we're going to make a trade. I want to give David Dahl one more year. I want to give Almora one more year before we make any changes um and then pitching rotation wise this is how we're gonna look for now um i might bring up another bullpen arm i think we may have one as well uh we could bring up gutierrez we could bring up musgroves again uh i bars there i bars actually i i'd be down with maybe trying out i bar see how he does make the team a little bit younger he moves up to a 76 that, that's that's not a bad idea um put him put him here why not i mean his per nines are pretty nice his control's not bad um i'm waiting for rob lang to be ready i think he'll be ready next year for sure he looks like a really good prospect i'm i tried to pull up welker he dropped down to like a 74 so I think he's still at least a season away. Vernon Gutierrez is moving up slowly. Um, looking at our other prospects. Um, I think most of them have like gotten moved up. Lewis Dempsey is there as well. So most of our prospects are pitchers. And overall, the team may have not in may have not improved too much this offseason, but I think the additions of Claudio, Carlo Hernandez being called up, Caleb Ferguson, I think those are three strong lefties. Um, Ibar is moving up as well. And then I know we're relying on a lot of youth. We got Hampson, um, Brendan Rogers, 
Welker's on the on the the verge of being moved up. But at the same time, we're gonna have a lot of big contracts coming up soon. So I wanted to be able to afford those for season five and also still have some space that if we needed to, we could acquire someone maybe through free agency or through a trade that has a big contract as well. So this is how we're looking for season four. CPU is handling the draft. I'll see you guys at deadline day if we make any moves. If not, we'll see how season four finishes. At the deadline, I think it's time to move on from Garrett Hampson. Instead, we're gonna go for Nick Senzel of the Reds. Um, and so I looked, I was looking for right fielders because then we could move Almora back to center and I really wasn't finding any. I did see that Polanco's doing very well in Cincinnati. So it just turns out that if I have Polanco on my team, he doesn't do well. But if he's on a different team, he does, he does quite fine. So we're going to go for, we're going to go for Senzel. We're going to add in our lowest rated player in Nelson Gonzalez as well. And that's our new center fielder for the rest of the season. The team hasn't changed besides that. So I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Season four sees us winning the division 162. We're taking on the Reds. So uh, we're taking on our former player, Gregory Polanco. Looking at the league leaders, Trevor Story had the most home runs, RBIs, and runs. And then Kyle Freeland had the most wins. Okay. All right. So not bad. Let's see. Awards. Trevor Story won MVP and Almora won a gold glove. Trevor Story stats. Oh, it looks like we trade away Charlie Blackman. He was an MVP in 2020. That's that's cool to see. So, um, but let's let's take a look. So Kyle Freeland was 20 and 8. You know, a 3.42 ERA. So it went up a little bit, but you know he pitched 218 innings. I think that's the most um, he's had since the first uh, the second season. Um, so I mean, not not bad. Uh, looking at Marquez. Marquez is worrying me a little bit. Definitely. John Gray, 3-2 ERA is solid. Senza Tella's a little high on the ERA. He's up to an 88 overall, but, you know, it's a, it's a little high. Tyler Anderson has been phenomenal as this fifth starter. Like, he's he's been doing exactly what he needs to. Um, Fried, not bad. A lot better than last year. Caleb Ferguson, really. Last time we got Caleb Ferguson, he did amazing. And so now, now he's starting to worry me. Maybe, maybe we... Uh, shouldn't have two lefty long relievers uh lorenzen there we go that's what i want to see from him sub three era he's up to an 83 overall the drosian did very well claudio did very well ibar a little sketchy a little sketchy uh carlo a little sketchy as well um and then hendrix we moved him to the closer because um carlo was struggling a little bit but overall not not terrible not terrible a couple a couple questionable players but i feel like that's always the way with the the bullpen so looking at some of our prospects, ooh, Benito Gutierrez was a B, now he's a C. Enrique's moving down, he was a C, or he was a B, but our, our starters, Lang is definitely starting next year, so that's good to see. Let's take a look at our lineup. Um, Senzel hit almost 300, 30 home runs, almost 80 RBIs, that's awesome. 300 for Almora, that's perfect, you know. This season, eh, this season, eh, but you know, when you're getting 22 home runs, out of him, almost 200 hits, a 300 average. That's awesome. Trevor Story was MVP this year. He hit 50 home runs, 40 triples, 11, or no, 11 triples, 40 doubles, 187 hits. Great numbers. That's awesome. Arenado, he's still still doing very well. Um, Joey Gallo, I think, had his best year. Yeah, good average, good home runs, good RBIs, good hits. Strikeouts are going to be plenty, but, you know, it's Joey Gallo. David Dahl. This, this is what I've been waiting for. 31 home runs, 101 RBIs, the most hits he's had in his career. This is what I've been waiting for. And I'm glad I waited one more year rather than trading him because now we got a really good left fielder. Brendan Rodgers, you know, a little, a little come, come down from last season. He played a full year this year um, where he's actually starting. 13 home runs, not too bad. You know, 287 or 257 average, definitely not terrible. Um, Oh, bench. Yeah, it was whatever. Um, so overall, I'm pretty pretty happy with the way things went. Definitely happy with the way things went. And uh, let's get into the playoffs. Let's see how things go here against the Reds. And we we swept them. All right. So next, we're taking on the Mets. And we got it. We got to get our, our starting rotation all set up. Looks like Freeland got roughed up a little bit and still, still got the win. No, just pitched five innings. You know, that was that's a it's a little worrisome. Um, so we'll see how the rest of the series go though. Gets the win, a loss, 
A loss. We got a win there. So it's 2-2. And we're facing elimination against the Mets. So obviously we're not going to play it. We're going to quick manage it. City Field. Here we go. We got Freeland versus Syndergaard. Everyone's starting. That should be. Let's let's start it off right there. We that's how we start it off right, and then we get thrown out at home. So we don't we don't score, but they do, of course. So they got Newman. Chris Taylor's new. Um, everybody else is part of the Mets organization. Okay. So okay, okay, okay. Let's see here. That's not a good inning for us. We're still down one. We got to get one back, and it sucks because we had the chance to score. In the first, they get one. Oh, man, that's two down now. Three. Freeland is just garbage in the playoffs for us. Okay. We, we got a score here for sure, right? Freeland's pretty tired already. So what we're going to do is we're going to pinch hit. We're, we got we got to take the chances here. Um, We'll go Tapia. Real, oh man, that's annoying. That's really annoying. All right, no run scored, but we're we're running out of chances to get our runs in. We got three innings left. Man, a run scores on a double, and that that might be it. That really might be it, unless unless we go crazy here in the next two. There's one back, so we got we got a three run game. Can we keep it alive here? Come on, there we go. There's two. And then story just not good enough. So we're down to our last three outs. We're down two runs. Arenado, Gallo, Dahl, and that's the game. So Freeland, like, how do you suck that bad in the playoffs? That's disappointing. That's disappointing. So I feel like someone went a little bit quiet. I guess not. I'm, Arenado really did. Gallo. Rogers. So yeah, I mean, I guess like half our lineup hit under 200. That's not good. So I mean, I guess it's tough to win games when you're Yeah, when you look at it, we only had two games where we scored more than 3 runs. So uh, yeah, I I can see why we struggled a little bit. So let's get into the postseason. Let's see who won the World Series. The White Sox defeated the Mets. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um we're we're definitely going to be in need of something. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Exclusive negotiations. Freeland. I, you, I feel like we, ha we have to bring him back. We, we can't not. He's our best pitcher. We're going to go Freeland, Gallo, and Almora. Yeah, we'll do those three. So let's get those in. And I knew I knew we were going to have some big contracts here. So that's why I was kind of worried about it. Um. So let's, let's get into the free agency here and let's see what what we're working with so looking at arbitration um yeah everybody should be getting that there and then contracts wise yeah everybody should get one there so there's that i'll see you guys at the start of season five all right so we're gonna go peter lambert and harrison musgrove um for sir anthony dominguez he's 28 it says he's going down but um I have faith that he's not he's not gonna he's not gonna continue on a downward trend. So looking at what we're uh, gonna do for this year, this is this is kind of how we're looking. And I might even let Dominguez close games because I think Carlo is suited more towards the bullpen. Or do we? You know what? No, we got we gotta we gotta. We got to go for it. We got to go for it. We got to let our draft pick get involved, be our closer. So we got Ibar as well. Um, our bullpen looks like that. Our starting rotation, we have Rob Lang. Um, I believe he was second season's draft pick. Um, and then we'll take a look. I don't think I signed anybody. Um, Tom Chu, that was that was about it because uh, we needed a an extra, an extra arm in the first. Uh, farm system to help. I think it was double A needed an extra arm. So this is our lineup. It looks really good. You know, Almora, 96 story, 99 Arenado, Joey Gallo's 93, David Dahl's 91. Senzel dropped off a little bit. Um, but you got Brendan Rogers, who's a 90, Colton uh Welker, who's 84. Um 
it says Pinto. We'll, we'll give Zunino some more time um, behind the dish, but I I really think this team is this team is going to be good. It, they should they should be good, right? Um, players that could potentially be brought up this year. I don't really see anybody. I think Pedro Gonzalez would be the next starter that comes up, and I think he's still like another season or two away. Um, bullpen arms doesn't look like anybody there. Maybe Douglas or Rodriguez, depending on how things went. But um, yeah, we're kind of running low. Vernon Gutierrez from season one looks like he's gonna be good for the future as well. And then outside of that, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of low on future players. Maybe Dempsey as well, but. You know, most of our main prospects have been called up. So that's season five. I'll see you at the end of it. See how we did. And uh, hopefully, hopefully get past the first round of the playoffs. Season five, we won the division 109 and 53. We're taking on the winner of the wild card. So let's go take a look and see how things went. Rob Lang, best winning percentage, most wins. Carlo Her uh, Hernandez, most saves. Kyle Freeland had the most shutouts. And he also had the most complete game. So it looks like... Pitching wise, things went really well. Looking at awards, Rob Lang won Rookie of the Year and a Gold Glove for Aaron Nato. So, okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at the lineup first. Brendan Rodgers hit almost 300. He's up to a 94. He looks really good. 33 home runs, 116 RBIs. That's, that's just gross. So, we have a new second baseman for the foreseeable future. Our shortstop, obviously, is going to be Trevor Story. He looks like he's still doing well. 284, almost 50 home runs. 131 RBIs. Arenado, what, 286, 40 home runs, 95 RBIs? Solid. Joey Gallo, almost 280. Holy cow. That's like new records for him. 38 home runs, 92 RBIs. Almora, 271. Okay. You know, he's been kind of fluctuating between that high to like, what, 270, 290 mark the whole time he's been here. Senzel, 306 with 23 home runs and 83 RBIs. David Dahl's up to a 93. He hit almost 30 home runs, 287. Colton Welker in his first full season hit 221, which is a little disappointing. But um, hopefully things will get a little bit better for him. And then obviously Zunino has been kind of like the stopgap catcher, but 241 is kind of like what he does. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna freak out about it. So looking at the rotation, Kyle Freeland went 15 and 15 with a 368 ERA. So yikes. <laughs> yeah, yikes. Um, Herman Marquez. That's good. I like that. 3.19, 18 and 8 on the year, 200 innings. First time he's done that in a couple seasons. And uh, it worked out, you know, solid ERA. John Gray. Um, I mean, 17 and 8, almost 200 innings, a 3.36 ERA. That's solid. That's definitely solid. Sensatella. Um, probably not getting wins and losses because his stamina is at 64. I think he's more of a long reliever. But a 3.59 ERA for a four starter. He's only getting 175 innings of work. But, you know, he's allowing a run one every two innings, it seems like. So it's solid. And then Lang looks like an absolute beast for the future. His rookie season. This is his first season. 22 and 2. Almost 200 innings pitched. 59 runs. 58 of them earned. And a 2.65 ERA with a 1.06 whip unreal this guy's only 23 this guy's gonna be an absolute ace for the future Cy Young winner for sure Caleb Ferguson bounced back tremendously that's awesome to see Max Fried same thing you know I mean the ERA went up a little bit but okay you know he's getting better he's up to an 86 Lorenzen disappointing a little disappointing so we've only had one season below a three ERA. Um, Ibar below four now, which is good. He's like halved his ERA. Bidrosian, his highest ERA since he joined us. Um, Sir Anthony Dominguez, four. He's continuing to go down, it says, which kind of sucks. Claudio is a solid setup man, a sub two ERA. He's been lights out for us since he's joined us. And this man right here, Hernandez, 92 overall. His potential's going up. 51 saves, five blown. So more innings, more more hits allowed, just barely, but less runs, less home runs, less walks, and then more strikeouts with a sub three ERA, a 2.5. This guy, we got a setup man and an ace for the future, or a closer and an ace for the future. Oh man, this that looks nice. Um, we'll take a quick look at some of our prospects. Pedro Gonzalez is 
right on the cusp of being ready for the bigs. Um, that's awesome to see. Riley Pints there. Castellani. Um, anybody else? I don't think so. Um, bullpen. Doesn't look like anybody. Um, ooh, Torrey Douglas is an 80 now. Okay, so he's a couple seasons away. Rodriguez. I mean, he could even potentially go into the bullpen next year. Um, and then looking at our other players, Vernon, Vernon Gutierrez. I mean, we don't need a third baseman or a shortstop. That's the thing. But he's he's almost an 80. And then the other guy was uh, a right fielder, Dempsey. And he's, he's right there too. Maybe next season or the year after, he's going to be an 82, 83 player. You know, and he's, he's definitely pushing for a spot. So we got a couple uh, places that need to, you know, open up. Because we got we got Welker, we got um, Gutierrez, we got Dempsey, so definitely some young people to look out for. So let's see how this game against or this series against the Padres goes. Okay, it comes down to Lang, and I, I want to see how Lang does here. We're gonna play at Coors Field. Um, I want to see how he does. Obviously, we should have gone with Freeland, but Freeland's been a little bit of a disappointing um, player in the playoffs. So we got, oh, Lang Paddock story starts us off right with the solo shot. They got Newman, Royce Lewis, Judge. Okay, they've made some moves. Uh, we got to keep their bats quiet. We got to get on the board early and often. And Zunino makes it a three-run lead. Even Lang's getting a double. Get Oh, man, look at that. He's helping himself out. All right, let's get out. Let's get out of that. Let's not have that happen. All right, David Dahl gets one run back. And he can't help himself out a little bit more. But come on, double play, perfect. Solo home run, and number number two for Trevor Story. And uh, he's looking good for the day. I think this is going to be Lang's last inning. Five innings of work, I'm cool with that. Let's see if we can get another run tacked on. We'll let, we'll let Pinto go this time. Walks, okay. And then a strikeout. So, unfortunately, Lang didn't go the distance. But... I'm, I'm okay with that. That's cool with me. He made five innings, two run game, or a two runs allowed. David Dahl makes it a seven run game, and I, I definitely think that's that's game right there. Um, as long as we don't just completely fall apart. I mean, we're gonna let Lorenzen go just because that way we save some of the bullpen for the future. And this, you know, just to be safe, we'll bring in we'll bring in Ibar, see how he does. Does it? There we go. We're taking on. I forgot. I didn't see who that says. We're taking on the Nationals. So let's see how things go here. Oh man, we're facing elimination pretty quickly. Yikes! All right, so Lang again. I feel like we got to do it. He's he was feeling it last game. So it's you know what? I like it. I we got to trust in him. We got to trust in the youngster Lang. Um, so they got Turner, Enciarte, Soto, Robles, Rendon. So it looks like a, a normal Nationals team. Just with the addition of Inciarte. And he gets out of that jam. That's great. That's great. All right. Perfect. All right. No runs allowed still. We get a triple. Can we get this sack fly? Oh, man. He helps himself out. Perfect. All righty. Can we get... We need insurance runs for sure. We definitely need those insurance runs. Um, bats are kind of quiet, though. That's not good. That's what worries me. When the bats start getting a little quiet... All right, first and second, two outs. Come on, runner thrown out at home. That's what I was worried about. And it's Inciarte of all people that uh, get the gets the home run. But Joey Gallo gets us the lead back. Lang's back in it for the win. Um, but he's done. He's he's completely out of stamina. We're gonna go with. We'll go. We'll go. Fried here. He walks them. Awesome. All right. So now we're going to go to Dominguez. Double play. Gets us out of it. Perfect. Then we're going to pinch hit. I don't know who they're going to bring in. So let's let's pretend to swing. They're going to bring in Gant. You know what? We'll let Tapia go. Does he get on? Oh, that's perfect. The fly out. And we don't even... Nothing happens. We get that leadoff single. Nothing happens. So we're going to bring in Claudio. Gets us out of that eighth. Can we get an insurance run? Maybe. Oh, we do a triple, and we're going to pinch hit. Um, They still got the righty in, so I guess. You know what? Let's see what Welker can do. Can't bring the run in, unfortunately, but that's all right. We got a two-run lead. Hernandez coming in. Gets us out of it. All right, we're still alive. We're going to advance to the next day, I think, right? All right, cool. And then um, we're going to play this one. 
man it's gonna suck if we have to go to like the three three all right we got freeland let's just do this quickly just keep going keep going keep going all right no run scored there double play really oh man keep it going keep it going we do get the run in trevor story with the triple couldn't get him in but all right we still have a one run lead here okay really okay we're going against Strasburg too there's one back perfect all right all right that was his last inning no no question about it fly out pinch hit we'll do Tapia oh they're bringing Doolittle awesome all right cool um pitching change eighth inning we'll go Claudio and perfect all right eighth inning can we do it against rosenthal all comes down to this joe ross joey gallo nope nope that's the season that's the season there it is man we were so close and the nationals ended up winning it but i mean anybody go quiet during the the playoffs i mean 209 and 233 isn't the best 205 um, everybody else seemed to do well um, but the heart of our lineup kind of went cold which is a little disappointing to see um, Lang Lang was nuts he unreal stuff unreal stuff um, just crazy I can't I can't believe it Lang looks so good for the future but that's it guys unfortunately we weren't made, able to make it past the NLCS in season five or any of this we weren't even able to make it past like the wild card of the nlds prior to that so i mean i like the team you know obviously we do have a couple young players that are coming up that could help us out um so that way we don't have to end up paying albert almora jr a lot um senzel a lot we could probably move one of them away and we could let one of that that dempsey guy in right field come up we got a third baseman in gutierrez who could come up soon so there's there's young players who could come up to fill some of these big contract players that we have but I think this team is really solid. I'm not I'm not sure how we didn't win more games, but it definitely is a really strong team. Um, the rotation, the bullpen was a big question for most of it, but you know what? I think the, overall the team's really good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Rockies rebuild. If you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always in the comment section, let me know which team to do next. I'll catch you all in the next rebuild or video, whichever, whichever's next. Peace.